Liberty Sports TV here. Salute to the mighty LDBC. Lions Den Boxing Community. For those who don't know, now you know. Smash the like button. Hit the subscribe. Also, hit the notification bell so you'll be notified when I drop a new video. If you're digging the video, go ahead and share this joint. Man, oh man, oh man. Talk about a shocker. Talk about something coming out of left field, man. It's been announced. It's official. Canelo Alvarez, undisputed champion at 168 pounds, will be facing Jermel Charlo, undisputed champion at 154 pounds. Jermel Charlo will be moving up, I guess, and they're going to be fighting for uh, undisputed versus undisputed here. This is a great matchup. Um, a lot of guts. A lot of guts by Jermel Charlo. Uh, loyalty by Jermel Charlo for his older, for his brother. His brother, Jamal Charlo, wants to be in this situation, wants to fight Canelo Alvarez. But if you remember, uh, when this announced, the first thing I, when this got announced, the first thing I thought about was that interview Jamel and Jamal Charlo did where Jamal Charlo was crying. He said that, you don't think I want to go after these belts? But he said, but I'm, I'm okay because my brother going to do it for me. All right. Now, I, you know, I kind of thought that was just like a figure of speech, but Apparently, they had already talked about this. Jamel is going to be the one to hold the family down while Jamal is going through his personal issues. I salute Jamel Charlo for that. Um, that that's what family is about, you know what I'm saying? Um, he's willing to put himself in harm's way, take chances with his own resume and his own legacy uh, <clears throat> to, you know, be, be the big dog of the house, you know what I'm saying? He's going to look out for his brother, look out for the Charlo name. I got nothing but respect for that, you know what I mean? He's taking a risk. He's moving up. He's jumping past 160, moving right up to 168. A lot of guts by Jamel Charlo. Canelo Alvarez uh, always seems to find, uh, <laughs> always seems to find, you know, it shocked the people. You know what I mean? Just when you, you know, criticizing Canelo, I'm not saying he's beyond criticism because some people will still criticize him for this. They'll say he should be fighting David Benavidez. Period. Uh, he's he's taking the easy route by fighting a smaller guy. You can say that, sure, but it's still going to be entertaining. It's definitely going to be entertaining, you know what I mean? Him versus uh, Jamel. Um, they say for, for September this year, um, I got Jamel. I think Jamel going to pull it off. I'm going to be honest with you. I think Jamel going to pull it off. I think it's going to be a hard fight. I think it's going to be uh, – it's going to come down to the wire. I think it's going to be very competitive, highly competitive, but I think Jamel Charlo is going to pull this off. Um, I think he's capable of pulling it off. Now, I hope Jamel Charlo don't make a fool of me because I, I have been on the record of saying I didn't trust uh, the Charlos to beat Canelo. I've been on the record saying that. I said I, I didn't trust them because they showed too much respect, too much admiration for Canelo, too much love for Canelo. Um, and I just felt like they get in the ring with him they're going to be in awe of him, like somebody playing Michael Jordan one-on-one. You know what I mean? You know, they're they watching him and not really – they're just so happy to be in his presence. I hope Jamel Charlo doesn't do that because then I'm going to feel foolish. I hope Jamel Charlo takes this personal, takes this serious, and he comes in here uh, uh, with the mentality of the of the destruction of Canelo Alvarez. Uh, I hope he comes in here looking at this like Canelo got something I want. I want the old-school – disrespectful, wow, Jamel Charlo for this fight. I don't want to see no respectful dude. The same energy Jamel Charlo puts towards all these other opponents when he clowned like Tony Harrison, I need to see that Jamel Charlo. I need to see the disrespectful Jamel Charlo. Then I'll be more comfortable in, in, in my pick that, that Jamel's going to win this fight. You see what I'm saying? I don't want to see all this uh, appreciation, you know what I'm saying, and much love to Canelo and all that. I don't want to see all that. You know what I mean? Um, but so this leaves the question, what happens with Tim Zoo? Did Tim Zoo take step aside money to allow uh, Jamel Charlo to fight at 150, uh, or fight, fight Canelo? Or uh, is Jamel going to vacate his titles after the Canelo fight? How is this going to work? You know what I mean? That's, that's the part we don't know. So I'm, I'll be waiting <clears throat> for somebody to interview Tim Zoo. Or someone to interview Jamel Charlo and ask exactly those questions as to what's going to happen with the belts or the, his title reign at 154. Um, 
you know, so we'll see what happens. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm very excited about this, though. This year of boxing is looking unbelievable. It's looking absolutely unbelievable, man. You're talking about <laughs> all these great matchups we got. We'll get Terrence Crawford versus Earl Spence finally. We're going to get Wilder versus Joshua finally. Hopefully we get that fight because, you know, you know Joshua still got a fight. Uh, uh, he still he wants an uh, interim fight. Wilder going to take an interim fight before December. And like I said, uh, the Saudis really messed that situation up because what they should have did was say, hey, look, I'm going to give y'all 10 million a piece to not fight nobody and wait till, till December. That's what they should have done, but they didn't do it that way. So I don't know why, you know what I mean, but whatever. Hopefully we get that fight. Um, we've got a lot of great matchups uh, this year in boxing, you know what I mean? So we get Stephen Fulton versus uh, Anui, uh, so on and so forth, y'all. You know what I mean? Um, I'm, I'm excited. You know, this this is unbelievable. So we finally getting the fights we want to see in boxing. And this is a fight that I didn't even think was realistic. Um, I was looking forward to Jamal Charlo versus Canelo Alvarez uh, in the past, but not this year because Jamal Charlo has been inactive. He's been going through personal problems, um, personal tragedy and stuff like that. So I want to see Jamal get right back in the right head space. You know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? Get back in the right head space before he takes on uh, anybody the caliber of uh, Canelo Alvarez, you know what I mean? So what does this leave David Benavidez? Uh, Benavidez, I don't think he should sit back and, and wallow in his sorrow. I think what David Benavidez needs to do is shut up his critics. Uh, David Benavidez has critics, and his critics believe, hey, man, what's about what about David Morrell? Why don't you fight David Morrell? If I'm David Benavidez, I want to destroy David Morrell. I want to leave uh, no turn, uh, uh, no stone unturned. I want to absolutely destroy David Morrell just to let people know he can't with me either. That's what Benavidez's mentality has to be. He can't start like trying to avoid David Morrell because y'all team already looked bad when y'all was trying to talking about avoiding uh, Demetrius Andrade. You see what I'm saying? So Benavidez got to go out there and, and <clears throat> really start putting in some work. All right, but anyway, that's my two cents on this matter. Um, congratulations to Jamel Charlo for having the testicular fortitude to do what he's doing right now. It's a big risk, you know what I'm saying? A huge risk for him, but he's uh, he's going to get paid. You know what I mean? It's a great opportunity. Uh, let me know what y'all think. 78 Sports TV, salute to the mighty LDBC. Smash that like button, hit the subscribe, turn on your notification bells. I'm about to hit all deuces.